Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Vertus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Level Design Essential Series. In today's video we are going to be showing you how you can quickly populate your environment with foliage assets using the foliage tool. Now in the last video I showed you how you can manually add in your static meshes from the content browser, so dragging and dropping them in. However, if you wanted to create a scene similar to the one that I've got here, it is going to take you a long time. You've got lots of pieces of grass, lots of trees, lots of bushes, lots of rocks, and that is where the foliage tool comes into play. It's going to allow you to quickly and easily paint in the different types of assets as opposed to manually placing them in one by one. And with this tool, you also get a bunch of controls which are going to allow you to vary your environment a little bit as well. So you can randomize the rotation of your bushes and your trees. So even though I've only got one tree model here, because they change in size and rotation, as a player of the game, you simply would not know that. Now, what I'm going to do is show you how you can create this little scene really easily using the foliage tool. So what I'm going to do is delete everything that I've got there already, and I'm going to show you how we can do all of this from scratch. Now, one thing that I do want to mention before we go any further is that you are going to need some foliage assets to work with. Now me, I got these from the open world demo collection, which can be found inside of the marketplace. And then if you add it to your project, that is going to give you a whole bunch of rocks, trees, bushes, and so on that you can use for your project. It's completely free and made by Epic Games. Just find it, press add to project, and you're good to go. Now, if you want to get into the foliage mode, it's really simple. You can either go to the modes panel at the top here and press shift and four, or you can just, uh, yeah, just do that. Just go to the modes panel, click the little leaf icon, or you press shift and four, it's as simple as that. Now, once you get into here, it is going to give you this new mode, a new way of painting your static meshes into your scene. Now, before we can do this, we actually need to load it up with a couple of static meshes that we can work with. So for me, I'm gonna start off by adding in some grass and that is inside of kite demo. And then if we go into environments, foliage, and then grass and field grass, you can see we have got a static mesh for the grass. So what I'm gonna do is click this and drag it into a little bit here that says drop foliage here. And then if I click, drag and drop it into here, we can now start to paint in our grass. And that's gonna be using the brush. Now we've got a couple of brush options at the top here. We've got brush size, paint density and raise density. So brush density is pretty straightforward, just changes the size of the brush. If I turn this all the way up, it's going to be a big, big brush. If you want more control, you might want to turn this down and it'll be a little bit smaller. Now, if I just go and left click and drag on, you can see it's starting to paint in for me some grass. And you can see we've got lots and lots of little bits. And this is where your paint density comes into play. Because this is quite low at the moment for me, set to 0 0.23, it's gonna be quite sparse. If I set this all the way up to one and then paint it in, you are going to see that it's a little bit thicker. There is a lot more of this grass and I have quite easily created 3,340 individual instances of this grass. And you don't wanna to have too many, but I'm gonna explain a couple of tricks that you can use to make this look a little bit better without hurting the performance later on. Now, if you wanna delete this, it's really simple. If you hold down shift and left click with that brush, it is going to delete everything in its path. However, if you don't want it to delete all of them in there, you can change it to a density. So I can change my erase density down to something like 0.5 and what this will do is control the density of the foliage to leave behind when erasing with the shift key being held. 
So if I hold down shift and go over this, it is only going to erase about 50%. So it'll we'll leave 50% of them behind, which is quite nice. Now, another way that you can go about deleting them is by using the select tool. So on the left hand side here, you can either select them manually by clicking the little cursor and then the individual pieces of grass. And then from there, you can delete them or you can go and use the translation tools to make it bigger or smaller, move it left or right. And then you can also rotate it, it's entirely up to you, but you have got that option there. Now what you can also do is use the lasso select to select multiple assets and then manipulate them using those transformation tools. So if I turn down my brush size and then select just a couple of these, I can then scale them up or down entirely up to you. If I scale them up, it looks quite thick and quite lush and quite nice. And you can see that's only applied that to a couple of these. And I can get rid of that selection just by clicking anywhere else. So moving on from there, now I'm gonna show you how you can have a little bit more control over the assets that you're painting on. And that is done in the details panel for your assets. So what I'm going to do is hold down shift and change my erase density to zero and just delete all of these quickly. And then what we're going to do is repaint those, but with a couple of a set, a couple of settings being adjusted. So I'm going to move my content browser down a little bit and move this up so I can get to them a little bit easier and then play around with these settings. So the first one, with your grass selected, you can change the mesh. So if you wanted to, you could change this to like a bush, a tree, it's entirely up to you. But I'm gonna leave it as it is. So the next one you've got is your density. And it works in the same way as your paint density. However, it's only going to apply to the grass. And if we're also painting on trees and bushes at the same time, it's not going to apply to those. So if I turn this down, I can make it a little more sparse. If I want to turn it up, I can make it thicker. And with this, you can go above the value for one. So you can turn this up as high or as low as you like. So you can see here, I've just set this to 75,000 and it has almost just crashed my computer. And suddenly we have got 78,800 pieces of grass. So I'm gonna press Control Z to just undo that change that I made because I just don't need that many. What I will do is set this down to something like 25 and I'll have a more reasonable amount of grass. Now beneath this we have our radius and this radius is basically the minimum distance between foliage instances. So what this is going to do is essentially set a minimum distance and the reason why you might want to do this is if you're working with trees, for example, you don't want them to be side by side, one next to each other. And that's where you just play around with this value to get the correct distance apart. Scaling, I would just leave this to uniform and that will just keep the scaling uh, locked to the X, the Y and the Z. It's not gonna become disproportionate, just leave it at that. And then one of the cool settings that we've got down here is the scale of the object. So with our grass at the moment, it's very small. What you might wanna do is set the maximum up to something like five, and you can see our grass is bigger. And we've got a minimum and a maximum value. And the reason why we do this is so that we can have a little bit of variation. So even though it's just one grass model, you've got varying sizes and the player would not know it's just one piece of grass. So I'm gonna set the maximum between three and five. And then even though it's quite sparse still, because it's bigger, it does look really nice. And that's just one of those tricks that I mentioned for keeping the performance good uh, without affecting the visual quality. So that looks quite nice to me. So going down, you've got a couple more settings. The Z offset is essentially 
how far it should be off the ground. Now with foliage, I don't like using this, so I don't, but that's essentially what it does. It basically specifies a range from minimum to maximum of the offset to apply to the foliage instance's Z location. So that's off the ground. Normally, you want your trees to be on the ground, you want your rocks to be on the ground, so I'm not even gonna play with that. Leave your align to normal on, and leave your align max angle to zero as well. Now, one of the cool settings that we do have available to us is random yaw, and by default, this is turned on. And essentially, what this is doing is randomizing the yaw, so the rotation of your assets. So with our grass, it's automatically rotating them so they don't all look the same. What I'm gonna do is go into my kite demo, environments, and then trees. I'm gonna add in a tree so you can see this coming into play. So what I'm gonna do is add in this second static mesh into here. And then if I paint this in, at the moment, they all look the same. They're the same height, they're the same rotation. The player will notice they are exactly the same. So what you would do is use your random yaw, have this selected, and then just use a varying scale, sort of anywhere between one and five. It's entirely up to you. And I'm also gonna turn down my density as well to something like five. Actually, that's still a bit too much. I'm gonna change this to one and paint them on. And notice now, I have both of these selected and they are being painted at the same time. And that's where these per asset type details come into play because we've played around with the density of the tree and the grass and it's taken both of those into consideration even though our paint density is set to one, which is great. So what I'm gonna do is just get rid of these real quick and I'm just going to set the tree minimum, and maximum to one and three, something reasonable, and just repaint those. And I'll continue going through some of these settings. I'm gonna paint these on, and you can see they look quite nice. Now, what you will notice are the trees are very close, so you set your density to one, and then just play around with your radius. So if you turn this up, they are going to start getting further apart. And before you notice it, you might have to change it up quite high to something like 50. But you can see our foliage is really starting to come to life. So moving on, we've got a couple more settings down at the bottom, such as your mobility, shadows, do you want them to cast shadows, yes or no? Um, you will get to know some of these settings and what they mean as you start to learn the engine a little bit more. So I'm not going to explain all of them. But one of the ones that you do need to know, which is really important, is your collision. So with the tree selected, I am going to set my collision from no collision to block all. So the player will not be able to walk through that tree anymore. And I'm also, with my grass, going to make sure this is set to no collision because you don't want to be blocked by the grass. You want to be able to walk straight through it as you do in real life. Anyway guys, that's pretty much all the settings for the foliage mode that I wanted to go over. Have a little experiment with that, play around with it, create some really cool scenes. And if you do create something awesome, feel free to just send them to me on Facebook, Twitter, it's entirely up to you. But once again guys, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating, your boy Vertus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.